Now you're on. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Boston United Methodist Church. We are so glad you are here to worship with, a, with us. Some of you inside, some of you outside, some of you at home. No matter what, you're part of our family and we love you all. I want to run through the announcements very quickly. Uh, let's see. Christian Fellowship will be downstairs following worship. Um, we also, do we have any celebrations, any birthdays or anniversaries? Yes, Renee. Chris turns 21 on Tuesday. No. Chris no. turns 21 on Tuesday. And, and I believe Jean's birthday is, is the next day. Wow. And I know our Linda's is coming up, but next I guess Monday. it's, it's next, next Monday. Monday. We'll have to wait one more week to sing. <laughs> But we're just in the countdown for that, aren't we? Yes. 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 Will she be 21? Yes. <laughs> She'll be 21 also. <laughs> She's two sevens. All right, let's uh, move on. I didn't dis disclose this anymore. Our New Testament challenge, you are nearing the end. Those of you who have hung in there all year, God bless you. Uh, this week it's James chapter 5. This is what I have on mine. Nope, I have, did not update on mine, so I'm going to see how good my eyes are. 1 Peter chapter 5, 2 Peter chapters 1 through 3, and 1 John chapter 1. At least I knew, right? So that means I'm reading too. <laughs> All right. Next, uh, our Bible missions. Please remember Bibles for the world. There are envelopes in the back. Um, Bible studies are Wednesday mornings at 9 a.m. They are here. However, I do have the phone tree ready. Um, and I know Marie has one for Anne. Um, if there's going to be a cancellation due to inclement weather, one of a few people will call you. So uh, that could be in the case this week. We shall see. And if that's the case, we'll probably do it by Zoom. You know, we shall see. We'll make that decision early in the morning on Wednesday. Last but not least, join the choir. Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. You'll be glad you did. You leave happier after singing. It's wonderful. All right. Any other announcements? Oh, I want to give you an update on the supper last night. Thank you to everyone who helped with the supper. We did exceptionally well exceptionally well, more than enough, which means that we have extra to go toward uh, eating costs for other folks. Um, I think it was over $700, wasn't it, Marie, that was brought in? $790. So we're really thrilled over that. So God is good all the time. And all the time. Amen. All right, any other announcements from any of you? All right, then let's prepare our hearts for worship with the prelude, the lighting of the candles, and the ringing of the bell. Yeah. 
honored today to give honor to women and men who have served their country with dignity, honor, and courage. We, we not only honor those who serve in the military, but we also give thanks and honor for families, especially spouses and children, who may have waited with bated breath for the news of their loved ones who risk their lives in places far from home. We who love this country ask that you not let us forget those who serve and continue to serve. May their example encourage us in our service to community, country, and world, so that together we might pursue the common good of all creation here and abroad. Amen. And please join in the hymn, God of the Ages, up here on the screen. Our now, hymn, the hymn no, we will be last. Our bill is going to be doing a little trumpet intro, and yes. I have been told, if I get it right, we'll hear Linda play the organ, then Bill will play, then we sing. Okay? At the beginning of each verse. Okay? because I am under attack. My enemies persecute me all the time. 
All day long, my opponents attack me. There are so many who fight against me. When I am afraid, O oh Lord Almighty, I put my trust in you. I trust in God and not, uh, and I'm not afraid. I praise him for what he has promised. What can a mere human being do to me? My enemies make troubles for me all day long. They are always thinking up some ways to hurt me. They gather in hiding places and watch everything I do, hoping to kill me. Punish them, O oh God, for their evil. Defeat those people in our anger. You know how troubled I am? You have kept a record of my tears. Aren't they listed in your book? The day I call to you, my enemies will be turned back. I know this because God is on my side, the Lord, whose promises I praise. In him I trust, and I will not be afraid. What can a mere human being do to me? O oh God, I will offer you what I have promised. I will give you my offering of thanksgiving. Because you have rescued me from death and kept me from defeat, and so I walk in the presence of God, in the light that shines on the living. Say praise to God. Thank you. And before I go on to the epistle, I have a short story I wanted to um, tell you. It's about um, a time that was similar to this week back in November. I had an Uncle Roy, who was my great Uncle Roy, and an Aunt Marion. Uncle Roy looked like Paco. I don't know if anybody's ever seen him. But in Aunt Marion was a hoot. She was really nice. Her job, once the kids grew up, she was a nanny and a cook for the noise people, oh, noise and sons, the type of company. And I would go and stay with Uncle Roy sometimes, and we would make biscuits out of a box from the Raleigh man, and we'd add water, and they probably were only about this thick, and they were hot as rocks. But we ate them because they were warm from the oven. But anyway, Uncle Roy, I would say to him, because he would bring um, Aunt Marion in on Sunday evenings, and he would go and pick her up Friday nights. And I would say to him, don't you miss her, Uncle Roy? Well, I like picking her up on Sunday nights, but I'm equally as happy to bring her back on. <laughs> You know, I, I like picking her up on Friday nights, but I'm equally as happy to bring her back on Sunday, so we kind of laugh. Well, one particular week I was there, Uncle Roy had picked me up with his truck, and I noticed it sounded super loud. And he said to me, my muffler is gone, and I don't know how I'm going to fix it. He was one that he always had these uh, become rich quick schemes, and his last one was he bought 18 chickens that he called Miss Biddy's. And he had the eggs, and he was going to sell them and make money. Well, of course, he expected 18 eggs a day, which he got, but sometimes not. So he said he didn't know where he was going to get the money to pay for the muffler. But then he had a brainstorm. On Wednesday, we went to this miraculous place. It was called the Pawn Shop in Westbrook. It had a lot of good things in there. Oh, yes, a lot of old things, but anyway. So he took his pocket watch, which he loved, because it was my great-great-grandfather's, and he'd given it to him. And he used to open it up several times a day and just see the time every other minute, I thought. But anyway, so he brought it in, and he handed over the pocket watch. And I was so sad. I thought, what's he going to do with all that? But the pawn man, the pawnbroker, gave him this little card stock, and it had it on redeem number 109 on it. And he showed it to me, and he put it in his billfold instead of wallet. He called it a billfold. And off we took towards home. And I worried. He said, I'm going to get my watch back in three weeks. And I thought, oh, yes, how are you going to do that? Well, I'm going to have my eggs from the Miss Biddies, and I'm going to make a jelly cabinet for Mrs. Susie down the street, and I'll get the money. So sure enough, I was over there three weeks later. Down we went. He took his Redeem 109 out of his billfold gave it to him, and in it he paid the money that the man had given him, a little bit more interest, because that's how the man makes his money. And he got his watch back. Well, what, what's that got to do with Thanksgiving? Well, we should be all thankful, because our Jesus died on the cross to redeem us from our sins, so that we could be sure of being in heaven. And I hope you like that story, because it's a true one. Thank you. And I still miss my own boy. <laughs> Thank you. And now, the epistle is Romans 8, 18 through 28. It 
It's called the future glory, and we're all looking forward to that, aren't we? I consider that what we suffer at this present time cannot be compared at all with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. All of crimson waits with eager longing. All, oh, excuse me, all of creation waits for eager longing for God to reveal his children. For creation was condemned to lose its purpose, not of its own will, but because God willed it to be so. Yet there was the hope that creation itself would one day be set free from its slavery to decay and would share the glorious freedom of the children of God. For we, for we know that up to the present time, all of creation groans with pain, like the pain of childbirth. But it's not just creation alone which groans. We who have the Spirit as the first of God's gifts also groan within ourselves as we wait for God to make, a, make us his children and get our whole being free. For it, is, it was with hope that we were saved. But if we see what we hope for, then it is not really hope. For who of us hopes for something we see? But if, not, if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with many, many days of patience. In the same way, the Spirit also comes to help us, weak as we are. For we do not know how we ought to pray. The Spirit himself pleads with God for us in groans that words cannot express. And God, who sees into our hearts, knows what the thoughts of the Spirit is, because the Spirit pleads with God on behalf of his people and in accordance with his will. We know that in all things God works for good with those who love him, those whom he has called according to his own purpose. Those whom God has already chosen, he also set apart to become like his son, so that the son who would be the first among many believers. And so those whom God set apart, he called, and those he called, he put right with himself, and he shared his glory with them. Thanks be to God. And now we're going to be blessed with the choir anthem, a prayer for our nation. And we may be little, but we're mighty. <laughs>
was scared. <laughs> stand and feel safe to stand while we read the gospel. And it's John 14, 1 through 4, and then 15 through 21. Jesus, the way to the Father. Do not be worried and upset, Jesus said to them. Believe in God and believe also in me. There are many rooms in my Father's home and I am going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I am going. And then we're going on to John 14, 15 through 21. The promise of the Holy Spirit. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, who will stay with you forever. He is the Holy Spirit, who reveals the truth about God. The world cannot receive him because it cannot see him or know him. But you know him because he remains with you and is in you always. When I go, when I go you will not be left all alone. I will come back to you. In a little while, the world will see me no more, but you will see me, and because I live, you also will live. When that day comes, you will know that I am in with, I am in with my Father, and that you are in me, just as I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. My Father will love those who love me. I, too, will love them and reveal myself to them. And all who believe in Jesus Christ, please say amen. 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 And then please stand and remain standing for America the Beautiful um, in United Methodist Temple 696 or up here on the screen.
our strength and our redeemer. Well, this week we celebrated Veterans Day. We honor and thank our veterans who served in our nation's military to protect our freedoms. And I want to take a minute to just acknowledge those who are in our midst who have who are veterans. I know our Jim Sturgis served. Jim, you served in the Army, am I correct? Three. How many years, Jim? Three. Three years in the Army, and I will never forget they got to go to Alaska. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. And our Renee, I believe, was in the military. Tell us, um, Renee. Yes, I was in the Army. I thought this was quite a blessing because it was never something I ever Where we are. 
must put our trust. The Bible, cover to cover, is filled with stories of human strife over thousands of years. Why? Because human beings have a long history of strife. We live in a fallen world. We have instability. We have unknowns. And much of the world looks to leaders for answers. Now, don't get me wrong. We all should, must get out there and participate in our precious democracy and cast our votes for those whom we think can do the best job in such a time as this. But who should we look to, really? Who should we trust? I don't know about you, but no matter who is elected to either the presidency or the governorship in any election, I put my trust in God Almighty, not in humanity. If my hope was in flawed, sinful, imperfect human beings, I know that I'd be sadly disappointed on a regular basis. I draw comfort from the words of Isaiah 26, verses 3 through 4, which say, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord, is our rock eternal. You know, our nation's currency says on it, in God we trust. I don't know about you, but I'm glad it does. Have you ever wondered why we have the motto, in God we trust, on our currency and where it came from? I'm going to share the story with you. Any of you can find this on um, a national website, treasury.gov. The motto, in God we trust, was placed on United States coins way back during the Civil War. You see, many people within the Union felt that God was on the side of abolitionism. It was the right thing that God would want them to do, giving freedom to enslaved peoples. And in this time, many letters came in to the Secretary of Treasury, Salmon P. Chase, from devout people, urging that the United States recognize God on nation's points. Well, it appears going back, the very first letter was written on November 13th in the year of 1861. So today's the anniversary of that. Reverend M. R. Watkinson, I'm sorry, <laughs> from Ridleyville, Pennsylvania, he wrote the following letter. I'll be brief. Dear sir, you are about to submit your annual report to Congress respecting the affairs of the national finances. One fact touching our currency has hitherto been seriously overlooked. I mean the recognition of the Almighty God in some form on our coins. You are probably a Christian. What if our republic were not shattered beyond reconstruction? Would not the succeeding centuries rightly reason from our past that we were a heathen nation. Next, Watkinson offered ideas as to what that coin might look like, and then he concluded his letter writing, this would relieve us from the ignominy of heathenism. This would place us openly under the divine protection we have personally claimed. From my heart, I have felt our national shame in disowning God as not the least of our present national disasters. To you first, I address a subject that must be agitated. Now, only seven days later, after that was written, on November the 20th of 1861, Secretary Chase responded with his own letter. And I'm most impressed by that. It must have taken time for the original letter to travel to him, because this was 1861, remember. Now, in those day days, mail was delivered either by horse or by train. So Chase must have responded to this 
letter almost immediately because only seven days after the dating of the first letter being written, Chase wrote back. Dear sir, no nation can be strong except in the strength of God or safe except in God's defense. The trust of our people in God should be declared on our national flags. So that's when that happened. The phrase was put onto the American coin in 1864. Then it was added to paper bills much, much later, not until under President Eisenhower in 1955. So, how old were you in 1955? Is what I'm wondering. You were one, one? Okay. I was nine. You were nine? You were born? Okay. For many of us, we've all known it in our lifetime, but it's amazing to think that that didn't happen until 1955. <laughs> God bless you, Lynn. Um, now, I do not know, I, or rather, I do know, that in recent years, there has been a movement among some to remove that motto, and I think probably it's based on the fact that it happened for many, many years. It wasn't until 1955 that it was on the points. So far, that is not one in the Supreme Court, but we shouldn't be surprised by that effort. The scriptures tell us that God isn't even surprised by this. I think of the story of the Hebrews entering into the promised land. Joshua assembled the people and said to them in a very rousing sermon, If serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And I know the Sturgises use that for a grace at their family table meal. Joshua chose to put his trust in the Lord God Almighty. The God who delivered the people from enslavement in Egypt was present among them in their wanderings and had led them into the promised land. And as for me and my household, we do too. In God, we trust. World events will continue to happen. We will all continue to vote in the manner we believe God would have us vote. We'll continue to be thankful for and honor all those who have put their lives on the line to protect all of us who live in this one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we will continue serving the God in whom we trust. Because ultimately, we know that our true citizenship is in heaven. As citizens of heaven, we don't have to worry when things go awry here on earth. Jesus said his kingdom is not of this world and that he has overcome the world. Well, thanks be to God, we are all part of the kingdom of God. That's truly something to be thankful to God about. We get to experience the promises of God. We get the assurance that our hope is in a perfect, loving God who sees us, listens to us, and protects us. We know that our God knows each and every one of us by name. Most importantly, we know that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, God being worthy of our trust. And if you agree, would you say with me, as God's people, in God we trust. Amen. It's time to come before the Lord in prayer. So let's uh, prepare to be ready to lift up the names of those whom we love and the situations that are heavy on our hearts. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we pray that you would be with each and every one of us who declares today that it is you whom we trust. 
guidance and protection over us all. And no matter what happens, Lord, with our leadership on earth, may we be reminded that we belong to a kingdom, not of this world. We remember today in worship all our veterans, those who have served so selflessly, giving their lives in service, that we might be safe. We remember the many sacrifices their families have made because mothers and fathers are serving many overseas. And we ask that you bless their families and keep their loved ones safe. And Lord, we come before you now and we lift up the names on situations of those, those people and those things that are heavy and dear on our hearts. We lay them before your mercy seat. Sharon and Wendy. into the war in Ukraine. People in Spanish have lost their home on fire. For all these things spoken, Lord God, and the others that are in our hearts and in our minds, we lay them before you now. And we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And now our final hymn is Let There Be Peace on Earth, number 431 or on the screen. 